Hi there, my name is Taven. Um, I'm a pup. Bark, bark. Welcome to another story time with Taven. Today, I would like to read to you a politically correct bedtime story by the name of the Frog Prince. So, if you remember me saying before, I'm still not much of a political pup, so I don't know what's in there, if there's a Putin or a Obama thing or a raspberry, I don't know. So maybe we'll find out as the story progresses. Joining me, as always, to help out is TB. There he is, TB. Oh, he's so cute. And Jacob, Jacob. Yay, Jacob. Thank you both for coming and helping me out. Yay. And they're falling. No, he's falling. He's a folly pup. TB, go fall down. You might remember that's what he does. TB, go fall down. Okay, so let's just dive right in. The Frog Prince. Once there was a young princess who, when she grew tired of beating her head against the male power structure at her castle, would relax by walking into the woods and sitting beside a small pond. There she would amuse herself by tossing her favorite golden ball up and down and pondering the role of the eco-feminist warrior in her area. Uh, Okay, good, good. This is off to a good start. One day, while she was dreaming of the utopia that her queendom could become if women, spelled W-O-M-Y-N, because they're not men that woo, were in the possessions of power, she dropped the ball, which rolled into the pond. The pond was so deep and murky, she couldn't even have... She couldn't even see where it had gone. I couldn't even say that. Wow. She didn't cry, of course, but she made a mental note to be more careful next time. Suddenly, she heard a voice say, I can get your ball for you, princess. She looked around and saw the head of a frog popping above the surface of the pond. No, no, she said. I would never enslave a member of another species to work for my selfish desires. That's what she said. The frog said, Well, what if we were to make a deal on a contingency basis? I'll get your ball for you if you do me a favor in return. The princess gladly agreed to this most equitable arrangement. The frog dove under the water and soon emerged with the golden ball in his mouth. He spat the ball at the sink and said, Now that I've done you a favor, I'd like to explore your views on physical attraction between the species. (laughs) What a smart, clever, young frog we have here. The princess couldn't imagine what the frog was talking about. The frog continued, You see, I am... Not really a frog at all. I am really a man, but an evil sorcerer has cast a spell on me. While my frog form is no better or worse, only different, than my human form, I would much like to be among people again. And the only thing that can break this spell is a kiss from a princess. That's, that's... A longer version of princess. The princess thought for a moment about whether sexual harassment could take place between species, but her heart went out to the frog for his predicament. She bent down and kissed the frog on the forehead. Instantly, the frog grew and changed. And there, standing in the water where the frog had been, was a man in a golf shirt and loud plaid trousers, middle-aged, vertically challenged and losing a little bit of hair on top. (laughs) Okay, poor guy. The princess was taken aback. She didn't take front. (laughs) She took (laughs) aback. Okay, sorry. I did that. I'm... I'm sorry if this sounds a little classic. Classist. Not classic, but classist. She stammered. (laughs) But what I mean to say is Don't sorcerers usually cast spells on princes? Not princesses, but princes. Ordinarily, yes, he said. 
But this time, the target was just an innocent businessman. You see, I'm a real estate developer. And the sorcerer thought I was cheating him in a property line dispute. So he invited me out to a round of golf. And just as I was about to tee off, he transformed me. But my time as a frog wasn't wasted, you know. I've got to know every square inch of these woods, and I think it would be ideal for an office slash property share slash resort complex. The location's great, and the numbers add up perfectly. The bank wouldn't lend... This is getting very involved. The bank wouldn't lend me any money to a frog, but now that I'm a human form again, they'll be eating out of my hand. Oh, will that be sweet? And let me tell you, this is going to be a big project. Just drain the pond, cut down about 80% of the trees, get easements for... The frog developer was cut short when the princess shoves her golden ball back into his mouth. Okay, she then pushed him back underwater and held him there until he stopped thrashing. Um, okay. I'm sure he's okay, though. As she walked back to the castle, she marveled at the number of good deeds that a person could do in just one morning. Uh, I feel a little uneasy about what's happening. And while someone might have noticed that the frog was gone, no one ever missed the real estate developer. So apparently he went away, maybe to New Brunswick or something. Okay. Anyway, that's the end. That was a riveting story. Or should I say, riveting story. <laughs> sorry. I know I did it. I'm sorry, Phoebe. But it, it was a good one. And I had a great time here with you. And I, uh, I can't wait to see you next time on Storytime with Taven. Bark, bark. Uh, strike that to go to the actual paragraph. <coughs> Start over again. I had to think about that. Oh, I got this disjointed. Starting over. Ah, why am I doing this? Or maybe he went to a far up state? Wait, is, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs>